All right, everyone, we're going to get started. So I'm just going to put everybody on mute. And I am going to share these three secrets with you of how to have a more joyful and happy home, peaceful home. And, um, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about the parent empowerment program that I have coming up. And then I'm going to stop the recording and I'll stay on um, for a little while, as I always do, to answer any questions that you guys have. Um, but I want to make this short and sweet so I can send this recording out to a few people in my community that were asking for it. So these three secrets. Um, I know I've been talking a lot about getting on the same page as your parenting partner and how we can get on the same team. This is three secrets to bring more peace and joy into your home. And I actually have like a lot of grandmothers in my group, surprisingly. And I have a lot of people in my community that are grandmothers and they are actually really interested in what I'm teaching. So this workshop is going to be for all moms. Um, and, I, and I am gonna focus on women. Uh, just because the parent empowerment program that I am running will, this cohort will be just for women. So I'm going to just focus on women for now and how we can just be bringing more peace and joy into our lives. Because as I've been doing more work the past couple of years in schools, and I've been talking with a lot of people, anxiety and stress and overwhelm and worry, like those have been the top problems of, of parents. And I am the first to admit and raising my hand that like, I agree. Yes. I too am feeling some of these, these stresses from what has happened the past few years and just being a parent, you know, just being a parent ha adds a lot of um, stress to your life, just extra responsibilities and worries. So I'm going to get right into it. The first secret is to really be aware of your own state and to, to regulate your state of being. What does that mean, you say? So we only have two states of being, and this is all related to our nervous system. You can either be in a primal state, which is a freeze, fight, flight response. You're in this primal state. You've seen me do this. Your, your lid is flipped. Your amygdala is full on, like major radar. What are we going to do? We're going to freeze. We're going to fight. We're going to fight. And this all happened Thousands of years ago, our body created this brain for survival. We needed this amygdala for survival if we needed to run away from a saber-toothed tiger. But we're not really needing to run away from a saber-toothed tiger anymore. We just need to go to the grocery store and get our kids permissions to slip to school on time and get people places on time. And there's a lot of stress and anxiety and worry and like social media and phones and screen time and all the stuff that's causing our brain to do this. And I say this, so this is that primal state. You are in a primal state. This is actually called a reptilian state. So what, how can we get from here down to here? Because if we are going to look at your brain, and I love this handy brain model. I do this all the time, and I think it's so powerful. Dr. Dan Siegel taught me this, along with Jane Nelson and Barbara Kinney and all my positive discipline educators. But if you want to um, learn more about it, you can YouTube Dr. Dan Siegel, and he's a neuroscientist, and he does this handy brain model. So if you were to put your, your hand up here and your palm down, this is your brain stem. This is your automatic bodily functions. This is your, um, your breathing, your heart rate, your body just doing what it's supposed to be doing. And then if you were to put your thumb through this middle part, this represents the amygdala, the midbrain. 
This is where the major radar lives, that freeze, fight, flight response. What are you going to do? You know, what are you going to do? What's going to happen? So your, your amygdala is, is talking to your all the parts. But it's also where your emotions and your memories are stored. So this is key. Remember that one. Your emotions and memories are stored here. So we're going to put our fingers down. The back of your hands, this back part is your cortex. This is where your senses come in. And then this top part, that is all the thinking, all the thinking's happening. And then right here, your distal fingertips, this prefrontal cortex, this represents your prefrontal cortex. This is where so many of those executive functioning skills live. This is where our emotional regulation lives, response flexibility, morality, judgment, so much, so much is here. And what the neuroscientists have found is that this isn't fully developed until the age of 26, maybe 30 years old for our boys. It's not fully developed until the age of 26 to 30 for our kids. And we're expecting our kids to have a lot of this, a lot of these executive functioning skills that they just don't have yet. Okay, we do, we do. But the other thing that neuroscientists have found is that our brain has what we call mirror neurons. And these mirror neurons are monkey see, monkey do neurons. It not only affects what we see, I'm an empath. So I see someone crying and I start to well up. My kids always look at me when we're watching movies or even a freaking commercial, like my tears are, my tears are going. Um, so that's mirror neurons. It also, um, it's when somebody yawns, somebody yawns. I'll do it right now. You're probably yawning right now. Watching me yawn, I'm sorry, I did it will make you yawn. Those are mirror neurons. But it's also our emotions. Our emotions are, are that energy is, is what's happening here. So here we have our brain, our brain that I just told you all the skills that happens and what happens to our brain on stress, on overwhelm, on anxiety, on too much, especially with our kids too, overscheduled, so, you know, let's do this and this and this, like so much going on, overstimulation, all the screens, all the social media, everything's coming in. And then, um, you know, I, I do this example in my big workshops where I'll say, you know, you're, you're driving on 95 and someone cuts you off and then you spill coffee on yourself and then you get in, you just have a tough day at work, your boss is like, you're saying, you know, thinking you're late for a big project and then things just aren't going well and you get home and the house is a mess and everybody's like screaming for your name and maybe your spouse just says one thing, just one thing to you and what happens to this brain? Your brain does this. It literally goes into this uh, freeze, fight, flight response. Primal, you're in a primal mode. And, and this happens, it's, it's, it's not bad. It's just our human brain at work. This is what we were built to survive. So this happens, we, we flip our lid. And those mirror neurons, if we're like this, what do you think might happen to our children? What they, if we're all stressed and anxious, they're gonna be stressed and anxious. Sometimes with adults that don't have uh, those that fully executive functioning skills. Sometimes when the kid gets dysregulated and the kid's flip is, lid is flipped. But we also know that their, their brain's not fully developed until the, at least the age of 26, most likely 30. So they don't even have any, some of these skills, but are, are their lid is flipped and what the parent goes like this too. And here's the tricky part. Here's the tricky question. Who's responsible for this situation right here? If the kid is flipped and then the it, it triggers, it triggers the parent. 
who's responsible? We, as the adults, have the ability to respond. We have the ability to do this, to regulate our emotions. So that is the first secret. How do we regulate our emotions so that we can live in this more powerful state? It's a powerful state of being because you can only be in one or the other. You could be in a primal state of being or you could be in a powerful state of being. When I do this work with schools and I do this work with adolescents and kids, I call this, this is the wizard brain. You are thinking, you are able to be creative. You are able to think of solutions and options and you are on full zone. And then what's this? This is the lizard brain. This is the lizard brain. Can't think of anything. And what I say to the parents is, you know what happens in the reptile world? Reptiles eat their young. <laughs> reptiles eat their young. We need to be so aware this is where the self-awareness comes in of our state of being. And when we go into that primal state, it's not bad. Don't beat yourself up. It happens. It's our human nature to go into the state. We need to be aware and then we need to regulate those emotions. So one tip that I give parents is the acronym STOP. S-T-O-P. Stop. Just stop. Pause. T. Take a deep breath. I have been doing so much work lately on breathing and these breathing exercises, and it's really, really um, beneficial to do deep breathing exercises or even just being aware of how breathing works. You breathe in through your nose, and then so you the, take a deep breath. Got to stay on track here. O is observe what's happening in your body. So you're going to make your brain think. What am I feeling? Where am I feeling this in my body? You know, maybe if you're anxious, you feel anxious, it might be in your chest. And maybe if you're feeling sad, it might be in your throat. You know, and maybe if you're feeling this like anger, it might be in your gut. I don't know where it is in your body, but you're going to observe. The O is observe what's happening. Where am I feeling this feeling? And then the P is Proceed with caution, proceed with kindness, and proceed with curiosity. I want you to go in with this um, state of curiosity, like what's going on with my kid, you know, like, or what's going on with my spouse? Like, why are they acting this way? Instead of sometimes we go into the defensive or I know I might, you know, we go into this reactive mode. So how can we respond? versus react. So I'm going to stop there with the first secret. I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the chat and um, as they come up, but I'll definitely save room later for questions. So the second secret, so the first secret is just be aware of your state of being. And the second secret of, you know, how to bring more peace and joy in your house is to really figure out like what is it that I want like what do you need to bring more peace and joy into your house and so you really do a deep dive and an evaluation and what I'm going to be doing in the parent empowerment program is we're going to do like a life evaluation process where we're going to figure out we look at these 11 different aspects of our life and we figure out where are we in all these different levels um all these different areas of our life and where do we want to be so we look to the future of what do we want it to look like so you need to have an idea of what you want it to look like too and there's also this thing that I had learned. I remember when I first started doing this personal development work, it was when I did um, my encouragement consulting training with Lynn Law. She's the founder of Positive Discipline, what, the co-founder. And I was doing this work with her and she was talking about this um, balance, or not balance, well, let me just explain it to you. 
So where stress comes from, <laughs> where stress comes from. So she was talking about this spot of where you want your life to be. Like, I want to have a house with more peace and joy. I want this. And then you look at where your life is and you're, you're like, well, maybe my house is a complete disaster. Right now I have kids screaming in the background. I don't know if you hear that. Um, so, <laughs> um, for example, you might say, oh, God, well, my house is a disaster. It's like they're very chaotic. It's just, you know, messes or lay, like all these different things of like, this is, this is what I want. This is where we're at. And stress is kind of like this area in between of like, how do I get there? You know, how do I get from here to there? But the idea is, is we need to have a there. We need to at least have a really good idea of where you want to go in order to get there. And when I first did this life evaluation process, it was really eye-opening to me because I was like, oh, I'm really good over here, but these are the things I want to work on. And then you build your your goals around wh where you want to put your energy towards and your, your focus towards. So I thought that was a, a huge eye opener of, of just figuring that piece out. And then the, the third secret of like how to get there. So we've figured out that we need to, you know, have control of our own emotions and regulate our emotions and raise our emotional intelligence is what it is. We're going to be raising this emotional intelligence in our whole house. Cause as moms, I know that we're like the thermostat, right? Like we're in control of the, the energy of the house of, of how happy and how miserable it can be. We really are. I believe that that the moms are kind of in control of that. So that's why my focus is to, to work with moms so that we can learn some of these tools and strategies to use on ourselves first, and then we can teach our kids and our spouse will follow along just like that. <laughs> so we'll get there. Um, but so the third is really making a decision and this is huge. The power of a decision. And with the work I'm doing right now with mindset and understanding our brain and how the human operating system works, it's fascinating. It is fascinating. So if we can make a decision, easy as that. Just make a new decision. We're going to make an empowered decision to make a change in something. And maybe the decision is just, I'm going to allow more peace and joy in my life. I am ready to allow more peace and joy into my life. You just make that decision and once you start to make the decision and then start to take that action towards that, that's when it'll start to happen in your reality. So it all starts with our thoughts. So I want to quickly explain this one thing to you and then we're going to wrap it up. So it's based in cognitive behavioral psychology. And I think this is really important to know. So the first tip was also about um, psychology and how our nervous system works. So like, this is all science. This is how it's all connected. So it's these five primary drivers that we have. And it starts with our beliefs. Our beliefs that may have started early on in childhood. And that's why I do the work that I do because I wanna help parents so that we don't have our kids going to therapy later on in life. Like I wanna not have them be screwed up with some of these things that we may have said to them by accident and then they misconstrue it in some way. So it all starts with this belief, this belief. And the belief then produces a thought. The belief 
and the thought is always going to be aligned. And then the thought will produce a feeling. And that feeling actually produces like chemicals in our body. It's crazy. It's like the oxytocin or the other osis, <laughs> the other thing. Um, when you're either in that freeze fight flight response or you're in the happy, you know, the rest relaxation. So the oxytocin is good. And the other one is, I'm sorry, I'm not thinking right now. It's too late for me. Um, so beliefs, thoughts, feelings. And then due to those feelings that we're having and due to whatever the chemical reaction is happening, you're going to have an action. You're gonna have an action or you might even have an inaction. So that's what I was talking about with a client earlier today who was working with procrastination. You know, She was coming up with a belief that was causing a thought that was not good, that was causing her to feel bad. And then it was causing her to procrastinate and to in, not act and not go towards her goals. And then the action or the inaction is gonna create a result. A result. So those are the five primary drivers. That's cognitive behavioral psychology. Our beliefs dictate our thoughts, create feelings and, you know, chemical reactions, which will help to either produce actions or inactions. And then that'll produce our results. So what happens is, is sometimes we come up with a belief that does not serve us any longer. So that's when I talk about parents that I will help parents to reparent their inner child. And this is what I'm talking about. It's these bad, not bad, it's these beliefs that we've created a story around. And the story is, um, it's not helping us at all. So we need to rewire that. So that's what I do <laughs> in the parent empowerment program is, we are going to get so aware. We are going to get so aware of what it is that one we want. So we're going to create our own um, vision board almost with like a life evaluation process and figure out what we do want, what, what's working really well and what might not be working well. We're going to come up with a plan. And then what we're going to do is we're going to also look at some uh, philosophies that have really, really worked well around communication and connection, because I believe it's all about our connection. So what I'm doing with almost all of the programs I'm doing when I'm working with schools, when I'm working with parents, when I'm working with teachers, it's about this connection, this deep connection. And I think that many of us have been disconnected We've been disconnected, one, from ourselves and what we want, but also disconnected from even society and like our friends and everything. Like we're going through a process where there has been some grief and um, trauma, collective trauma throughout everybody, just with the pandemic, not a, let alone real trauma that has happened in people's childhoods and real trauma that people are working with now that... I 100% hear and see, and I'm here for that as well to help you through that. Um, because that is what's so hard is when you're thrown into parenthood and you still haven't healed some of your own wounds, that's where parenting gets really hard because you're having to reparent yourself first before you can parent your own kids. And so, what I help parents to be is like, how do I help them to be this whole human? this whole human so that we can go in and be the strong, confident parent that is going to allow our children to make some mistakes. And mistakes are just opportunities for learning, for learning something new. And we're gonna make some mistakes along the way and we're gonna, you know, course correct. So it's the, the energy in, in the house that I really wanna work with. Well, let me go back to the parent empowerment program a little bit. I'll talk you, to you a little bit about that. And then we're going to stop in about five minutes. So, and I'll answer any questions that you guys have. Um, so this is actually, I am 
creating um, my family empowerment academy. So I am creating a, a something really exciting, and I'm doing a lot of work to get, to get a lot of the videos done. So. I'm creating this parent empowerment program and I'm going to be putting a lot of stuff in there. So right now I'm charging such a little, like I, I think a, a very, very good price for what it's going to be. Cause you're going to have me for eight weeks and, um, and I'm going to kind of put it all out there. So this is exciting. It's exciting for me to put it all into video form and to, to collaborate all together into a membership site and, um, and to have all this. So I'm excited for me and I'm excited for the group that I want to have to go through this too. So I am going to have, the doors are going to be open until Monday, May 26th. Second, I believe is the date. We just changed it because I was having some computer issues. Still am, but I just wanted to double check the date for you guys. Um, yeah, so it's Monday, May 22nd, and we start Wednesday the 24th. So there's going to be five total group sessions, and it's going to be a small intimate group. I'm going to be capping it at, you know, say 12. And so I have a few spots still available and um so the five group sessions but then we're going to have three one-on-one -on -one mindset coaching sessions so one of the things that help has helped me tremendously is learning about my own mindset and how i can actually control my thoughts so i'm going to be incorporating three one-on-one -on -one sessions that you will have and those are going to be unbelievable and amazing. So on top of the five group sessions, you're going to have three one-on-one -on -one mindset coaching sessions. And it's going to be really strictly with mindset. Um, this is around parenting, but I also want to be open to let other things come in so that uh, the mindset piece is just separate. And then the um, then you there will also be video modules eight video modules around positive discipline and Montessori in the, in the home. And this brings the parenting partners together on the same page. So these are going to be short, sweet, um, 20 minute modules that'll bring you and your parenting partner through basically like the best of positive discipline, Montessori and positive psychology. So these are the practices that children should be living with. Like they need to be hearing these things. And this is scientific, scientifically proven and research-based. And everything that has come out now supporting Dr. Montessori and Dr. Alfred Adler and Rudolf Dreikers, who are the founding fathers of positive discipline, it's unquestionable. Like this, they knew what they were talking about, a hundred years ago. And so that's why I feel so proud to be a Montessori educator and to be a Montessorian and working with schools in Montessori that um, Dr. Montessori knew how to talk to children and she knew how um, <clears throat> they developed. So all the work that I do is based on optimal learning environments for children and optimal human growth and development. So if you're interested, I am going to be spending a fun six weeks doing this. So it, I have the um, information out in my sales page finally. So I will make sure that you have um, the sales page with the Parent Empowerment Program because the price is $7.97 until that May 22nd. And then it's just gonna go up to $9.97 which is still a really good deal with everything that I'm planning on giving you guys. And you're going to go into the summer just with this confidence. You're going to go in with confidence that you know what you're doing. Like, I, I can do this. You know, I can do this. And the, um, the mindset shift that I've had the past few years, and I did this in a workshop that I did at the school I was just working at, was um, I used to think, oh, so hard. This is so 
hard. Like, it's so hard to be a mom. Like, there's so much to do. And yes, that may be true. And for some people, for some people, it's not hard. You know, it's easy. Like, this is what they were made to do and whatever. But what I had to flip my mindset to is I can do hard things. So I wasn't ready to do the complete flip. So in my mindset coaching, sometimes we talk about these limiting beliefs. So that is an example of a limiting belief. This is so hard. Is a limiting belief. Doesn't help me. Doesn't help me at all to be thinking motherhood is hard. Um, it's only going to make it more hard. So what I needed to do was shift my thought and I'm going to shift it to something else soon too. So I'm doing like a, a thought ladder almost of like the step that I'm at is I can do hard things. That's where I'm at right now. I can do hard things. And then I want to eventually shift it to, you know, things, whatever, things flow easily or whatever, like whatever wording you can use. But these are some of the things that I will teach you. And some of it is a little, little woo-woo, I will admit. Um, I initially, when I was learning some of this stuff about five or six years ago, I remember being in a conference and I was like, just watching. And I think I was like, <laughs> and my uh, mindset coach at the time, I was at this mindset retreat. And I remember I was like, I'm going to this mindset retreat. I was like, what, the, what am I doing? But I remember Kiva, my coach Kiva was like, Kristen, <sighs> like she saw it. Like I was just kind of like, oh, like no one ever teaches you this stuff. No one ever teaches you this stuff. So I'm excited to know some of this stuff. So the mindset piece is going to be big with the parent empowerment program. The parenting piece, like I've done, I know I've done so much with positive discipline the past few years, and that is so much of my work. And especially my work in schools is teaching teachers positive discipline and parents, and it's helped me so much. But this mindset piece, that is what's really bringing it all together for me personally. And then, um, the next piece of it is how we can become an encouragement consultant and how we can encourage ourselves to lift ourselves up. So I'm going to teach you self-coaching skills, how to coach yourself through some of this shit that's going on in our heads. And then um, also then how we can coach our kids, because that is what I learned to be when I did my positive discipline training and I became an encouragement consultant and that's using positive discipline on yourself so you can encourage yourself to empower your kids, um, was I had to learn to regulate my own emotions, have that self-awareness of like, oh, this is going on, this is going on. So the other piece that's going to happen in the parent empowerment program is there's going to be homework. Yep. There's going to be a little bit of homework. And it's inner work. You don't need to share. There will be accountability. There's going to be a lot of accountability in there because I want this to be a transformational program. The only way it'll be transformational is if you do the work. Um, but it's going to be journaling work. So it's going to be work that I'm going to make you get a journal and, and it's going to be questions. So it's going to be that deep inner work. And the accountability, be if you, if you choose to share, you can share if you choose to help another parent, that's one way to even extend the learning that much further. You know, what we, what we teach, we learn even deeper. And that's what I have found um, my whole life. <laughs> I'm a teacher at heart. I started off my uh, career at age 21 as a teacher. And um, here I am at 46, still, still teaching. And I love it. I've changed the people I've taught. You know, I started with some young ones, you know, I started off in elementary school, but then it was the preschool kindergarten age. And um, I have to say, I do enjoy working with adults <laughs> even more. But that being said, um, 
over the pandemic, I worked with several families one-on-one -on -one, and I wasn't planning on working with their kids, but it was actually kind of needed that I worked with their kids because it was their children that were forming some of this anxiety and, and deep worry and overwhelm. Like these little brains were having these feelings. So I said, yes, I will work with your kids. And I loved it. It was so nice. I, um, I really appreciated being with other children again, you know, just my own. Um, but practicing some of these things, like in teaching affirmations and, and teaching some of these mindset shifts. And I remember um, talking about affirmations with one of my eight-year-old clients. And she had said, um, oh yeah, because I told her about how one of the thing, one of the affirmations that I say, I'm like, but I'm not there yet. And she's like, I know, but if you keep telling yourself that, you're going to get there, Miss Kristen. You can do it. And I was like, yeah, I can. I can do it. So like she was teaching me. So it's, it's really cool. So I'm excited. I'm very excited to share this with you all. So I'm going to stop here. I am recording this. So I'm going to send this recording to my community and I might be able to have it up on my Facebook group. I'll figure it out. That's another <laughs> mindset shift I'm doing is um, technology is easy. Technology comes easily to me. And um, I will admit right before this, like I didn't have a computer until about 6.30 tonight. And um, I'm gonna have to buy a new computer because this one is not working so well anymore. And so I was in, I was in a bit of a primal state. And then, um, you know, I knew it was all gonna work out. Everything works out. The universe has my back. So like I had to like say some of the affirmations to myself to like put myself back into a powerful state of like, you can do this, you can still do this. Worst case scenario, got your phone, which I, I did a Zoom earlier on my phone and it looked so much better. It would have looked better because now I look like, like a dark person with um, <laughs> a shiny forehead. But you guys don't mind, do you? <laughs> All right. I want to stop there because I think it's getting late and I'm getting a little cuckoo. So I'm going to stop. I will make sure to share the parent empowerment program with you. Doors are open. Just sign up. You can schedule a strategy call if you want. You could talk to me more about it, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be awesome. The, the five sessions will be recorded. If you can't make them, you can't make them. If you can, it'll be fun. It'll be great. They're going to be on Wednesdays. Some of them are at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and some of them are 8 o'clock this time Eastern Standard Time. Um, if you can't make any of them, we'll record them. But the majority of it is I will make sure to give you some of the um, staying um, to create a parenting partner team with the positive discipline trainings. Those are going to be huge to watch. You don't necessarily have to watch with your parenting partner. But at least both get on the same team, get on the same page. Like, this is what we should do. We should, we should do this positive discipline thing. That's kind of what people are doing now, nowadays. It works. Helps your kids to be more resourceful, resilient, responsible. It will help your children to be successful in this world and to thrive. And it is going to help you to be successful in this world and to thrive. So I am so excited to share these with you. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to stop this recording and stay on for questions from you all. All right. Bye for now.